वेलकम यू ऑल टू पार्ट फोर ऑफ न्यूक्लियर दैट इज रेडियो एक्टिविटी रेडियो एक्टिविटी इज अ न्यूक्लियर फेनोमेना टू अंडरस्टैंड अबाउट द रेडियो एक्टिविटी वी नीड टू अंडरस्टैंड अबाउट द न्यूक्लियस न्यूक्लियस आर ऑफ टू टाइप्स बेस्ड ऑन द स्टेबिलिटी वन इज स्टेबल न्यूक्लियस एंड अंदर वन इज अनस्टेबल न्यूक्लियस सो द नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन अराइजेस इज व्हिच न्यूक्लियस इज स्टेबल एंड द स्टेबिलिटी ऑफ द न्यूक्लियस डिपेंड्स अपॉन नंबर ऑफ प्रोटॉन्स एंड नंबर ऑफ न्यूट्रॉन्स प्रेजेंट इनसाइड द न्यूक्लियस Okay, let us understand about this again. If the nucleus lies in the first category, that is, number of protons less than twenty, atomic number less than twenty, and the, in this nuclei, if number of protons is equal to number of neutrons, then the nucleus is stable. Otherwise, it is unstable. In the nucleus, there are two forces. One is electrostatic force, and the other one is nuclear force, and they two must balance each other to make the nucleus stable. Now. let us move with the second category if number of protons is greater than 20 and less than 83 that is atomic number greater than 20 and less than 83 here the number of neutrons must be greater than the number of protons why because as number of protons increases electrostatic force increases to balance that we need more number of neutrons that is if the ratio of number of neutrons number of protons lies between 1 to 1.6 then the nucleus will be stable otherwise the nucleus is unstable right now let us move on to the third category what happens if atomic number is greater than 83 here all the nuclei are unstable itself now the important property of a unstable nucleus let us understand unstable nucleus always wants to become stable and in this process it emits certain kind of radiations and that process is called as radioactivity so let us define radioactivity radioactivity is a nuclear phenomena in which unstable nucleus undergoes decay with the emission of radiations so this phenomena is called as radioactivity and the radiations which are emitted are of three types it might be alpha rays beta rays and gamma rays and one thing to note here is the nucleus emits alpha or beta rays not both but these can be accompanied by gamma rays the substance which emits alpha or beta and gamma radiations are called as radioactive substances and this phenomena was discovered by henry becquerel so the important thing here is the unstable nucleus always wants to become stable and in this process it emits certain kind of radiations and how fast the nucleus will disintegrate to understand that we need to go with law of radioactive decay means on which factors does the radioactive decay depends does it depend upon temperature no does it depend upon pressure no it depends upon only one quantity that is number of nuclei present at that instant so let me state like this rate of radioactive decay means how fast the nucleus will disintegrate so rate of radioactive decay at any instant is directly proportional to number of nuclei present at that instant if there are large number of nuclei at an instant the radioactivity will be fast if the number of nuclei decreases radioactivity also decreases so let me tell mathematically now so dn by dt rate of radioactive decay is directly proportional to n here n is number of nuclei present at that instance and if you remove this proportional proportionality we get a constant and let me take that constant as minus lambda why did i take minus because here the number of nuclei is decreasing that's why let me take it as minus so dn by dt is equal to minus lambda n and you know lambda is constant and that constant let me call it as dk constant and this is all about law of radioactive decay means the decay depends upon number of nuclei present at that instant now when a radioactive substance uh, disintegrates what is the number of nuclei remaining at a time t that expression will be deriving now that is derivation of n is equal to n not e raised to minus lambda t okay let us start with the derivation let us consider a radioactive substance and let n not be number of nuclei at a time t equal to 0 that is initial number of nuclei 
as we know that the rate depends upon the number of nuclei present at that instant. So let me take n naught to be the number of nuclei at t equal to 0 and after time t, what is the number of nuclei now here? Let me take it as n. Let n be number of nuclei at time t and we will be finding what is the expression for n. Okay. Now let us use the law of radioactive decay. We know that the rate depends upon the number of nuclei present at that instant. And we also got at minus lambda, where lambda is the decay constant. Now, I want to do integration. That's why let me change the terms here. Right? So let me take this n in the denominator so that I can integrate here. Right? So if I take here, dg will come here. That is dn by n is equal to minus lambda into d. Now, we will be doing integration, integrating both sides. If I integrate it, I will be getting with the integration of 1 by n. And you know that integration of 1 by n is log n to the base e. Log n to the base e can be taken as lan. So, I will be taking it as, it as lan n is equal to minus lambda. What is the integration of 1 dt now here? T. Let me take it as t plus integration constant. Let me take it as c now here. Right? This is equation number 1. Now, the next step is we need to find what is the value of c now here, right? So let us say what happens if t is equal to 0 now, right? When t is equal to 0, number of nuclei will be initial number of nuclei, that is n naught. Let us substitute in this equation now here. When t equal to 0, n will be n naught. So we will be getting the value of c as ln of n naught. And I will be substituting this equation 2 in equation 1. Okay, let us check it out. What happens here? Ln n minus lambda t plus ln of n naught. I will be taking this to this side. So ln n minus ln of n naught is equal to minus lambda t. You know log a minus log b is log of a by b. Okay, let me use that uh, property here. Ln of n divided by n naught is equal to minus lambda t. Okay, so you know that n divided by n naught. There is base e. If it goes to that side, it will become e raised to minus lambda t. And lastly, we will be getting the expression that n is equal to n naught e raised to minus lambda t. Here, n naught is the initial number of nuclei. n is the number of nuclei at time t. Lambda is the decay constant. e is the exponential. Means it shows the decrease will be in an exponential form. Okay. Now, this let us define what is this now here. A lambda, and you know that lambda is called as decay constant. To understand this, since it is lambda t, I will be taking what happens if lambda is equal to 1 divided by t. If it is 1 by t, t, t will get cancelled, we will be getting with minus 1. Okay, this can be done as n is equal to 1 by e n naught. Then what, uh, how to define this decay constant? Decay constant is the reciprocal of time during which number of nuclei reduces to 1 by e times of the initial number of nuclei. So this is how we can define decay constant and if you want to find what is its SI unit, since it is a reciprocal of time, the SI unit of decay constant is per second. And okay, now let us understand about uh, activity, the rate of disintegration or it is also called as decay rate. Right? So let me tell you that the rate at which radioactive substance disintegrates is called as activity. The rate depends upon number of nuclei present at that instant. And uh, we get that n dn by dt is equal to lambda n, right? And this dn by dt, I can replace it by activity a. So a is equal to lambda n. Actually, it is a is equal to minus lambda n, but we know that in a radioactive decay, number of nuclei decreases. So now on what's we take a is equal to lambda n itself, and the SI unit of activity is Beckmerel, and other unit is Curie, right? So we know that the radioactivity was discovered by Henry Beckwell. So we are giving the sign of activity as Beckwell itself. So what is the meaning of Beckwell? In a radioactive substance, only one nucleus disintegrates per second. Then it is called as Beckwell. If 3.7 into 10 raised to 10 nuclei disintegrates per second, then we call it as Curie. Let us make what is the relation between Beckwell and Curie. So 1 Curie is equal to 3.7 into 10 raised to 10 Beckwell. Now, we have from the law of radioactive decay, so n is equal to n naught e raised to minus lambda t, and we want activity, so let me differentiate it. Right? Differentiating with respect to time, dn by dt is equal to n naught. I told the differentiation of e raised to a t is a e raised to t. So the constant is minus lambda. Let me take here n naught e raised to minus lambda t, and we know this lambda into n naught. Let me take it as a naught. 
that is initial activity let me consider in that way so a so dm by dt let me take it as a a is equal to a naught e raised to minus lambda t so we will be getting the similar expression that n is equal to n naught e raised to minus lambda t and it is all about activity thank you